Are we live? Are we? Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to thank, first of all, to Teatro Viriato and all of his team of this fantastic opportunity to open the dialogue between Portugal and Armenia from an art residency I did in September 2019, created by Lilith Stepan. Stepanian. So with us today, we have Fernando Pinto do Amaral, Lilith Stepanian, and Susana Guilimira, and we are on air. So let's meet our guest. Hello. Uh, I'm not hearing you. I am now. I would like to introduce first, we have Lilith Stepanian with us. Lilith is a multimedia artist and an art curator from Albania. Susanna Gilimirian is a curator and art critic from Albania. And Fernando Pinto do Amaral is a writer, a poet, a Portuguese poet, and a college teacher. How are you all? Hello. You okay? Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I think we can start from asking to Lilith, how did the idea from, from rural Armenian art residency came from? How did you build the project? Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for this opportunity, for inviting me to this event and this talk. Uh, about the idea, I always had the idea of creating art projects in rural places, but I didn't have conditions and opportunities. And I was running artist in residency program since 2014 in Yerevan, which is the capital of Armenia. Uh, and I always wanted to bring it to the regions and peripheries. Um, this is the decentralize it from the capital because all the art events are generally happening in the capital. And I wanted to help the community to connect them with art. I wanted them to meet international artists and enlarge their outlook, uh, change their perception about art, especially contemporary art, because people in rural areas are generally, especially in rural areas, are um, generally thinking that if they are visiting exhibition, they have to see something traditional. They have to see like traditional art forms, and this is something different than they are in a trouble they are trying to understand what is this uh, that's why i wanted to have artists who are working with new medias and innovative techniques and uh, in this way the rural people could be more uh, into contemporary art um, and also armenia has a huge culture and a very old culture generally i wanted the international artists come over um, so that they could develop their practices and create their production for the final show. Uh, the villages are generally, population in the villages are very mon monoethnic and uh, monotonous and mono monoethnic. People are like mostly Armenians are living in the, in the villages. And I wanted to create kind of diversity for a short period at least for this uh, with this program. Um, so we selected artists, four artists, for this first program, which happened in 2019. Uh, and somehow 
the project happened in Tallinn and uh, Yuragan, two Armenian, uh, one is town, Tallinn, Tallinn is a small town in Armenia and Yuragan is a small village, a village not that small in Armenia. So it happened, yeah. Great. I think we can see a bit of the footage uh, I've done there during this experience. We have this video, this teaser, so we can also show to our audience a bit of the rural area. Uh, I want, if I can add, Pedro. But if just two, then start. Okay. Yeah. Can also, can you ask them to just play a little bit second here? The last second, this is the best part. Return. This was a bit of the footage we've done in September 2019, but Lilith was also saying you would like to add more information about about his his experience. This is what I call online distortion when people are muted. We are not hearing you, but we will. <laughs> I am very sorry. <laughs> no, me, it's uh, okay. It was fun it's, each time someone concert. gets not mute, we just go like this, like on hair, and people get sound, uh, sound again. So I just wanted to add that it was uh, funded by the Cultural Ministry of Armenia after the revolution we had in 2014. Uh, so we decided to work with the government finally and we could finally implement the project with their help. This is all, all, all I wanted to add. About this is from the, the Tallinn Cathedral. Correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's from the 7th century. 7th century, uh, yeah. Yes, okay. And we could see Ararat. This was during the, the, the footage uh, of Tallinn's it's music the, school. Yeah, music school. It was the first time this project, as I said, and the community was very excited to see uh, a residency program. They tried to understand what does it mean. They were asking questions to me and mostly trying to communicate with the artists 
try to improve their English skills in this way, try to talk to the artists from Europe. <laughs> so they were very excited. And um, I think the communication, what I wanted, uh, and interaction was finally happened. And it was very educational for the community. Some of these pictures were, were it was uh, photographed by Yanni Quinn that also were, was with us in the residency. And it was very impressive, the dedication that the, for example, the director of the Italian music school had with this, with this, with, their, with the children's school. That was very impressive and amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, do you, do you, how do you feel the connection between your project and the community, for example? There is, they, were, they are receptive, they want more, they want to see more. Uh, as I said, it was the first time and we could not expect really very high impact, but uh, still we had, uh, I mean, it has to be permanent or long term in order we to impact. Uh, but somehow it changed the community, I think. And uh, as I said, the villages are very isolated from the capital and the cultural events are happening in the capital. So they were in that period into art and uh, they were very happy to see this foreigner, foreigners, international archives, their appearances, because, uh, as I said, it, um, Armenia is monoethnic, and especially Italian and Iraq, and they're not very often have meeting international people and artists who are extraordinary people. Uh, so it has kind of educational uh, impact on them. It changed their stereotypes, I think, somehow, and also connected them with uh, the art activities. Uh, and uh, Pedro, you are asking uh, if I have connection with them, sorry. Yes, also in, in yeah. Yeah. I have connection yeah, with This picture, it, it, this was the day we met Susanna when we stopped yeah. bureau bureaucracy, <laughs> when she went there. Mm -hmm. um, and I met you, uh, Pedro, and the other the other participants of the residency on that time in Tallinn, yeah. So I'll, if I'll, not this visit, if not this visit, we couldn't meet each other. So it was like kind of, yeah. It's true. With a director of Goethe Center in Yerevan. Natia, yeah. Natia is the director of Goethe Institute in Yerevan, Armenia. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have guests. We were very excited about the project, but um uh, some things we could not <laughs> implement as we wanted because it was experimental for us and we are happy mm -hmm. for having professional artists this was doing during the workshops i remember i was all, always asking to lilith like for them just to do like some or some moves or some sounds and i know i was always asking to lilith can you just translate so we can do ah. Ah, and she was like, you know, just a little bit, just wait a bit, I'm just going to translate right now. And the children, they start to, to imitate what we were doing, and that was very funny, because the, the language is barriers. Uh, sometimes we cannot just connect. So I remember just when we did the, the performance, I remember I just put it these glasses, I put it like this, I was with the camera, I started drawing them, and I was like, Chega de saudade. A realidade é que sem ela não há paz, não há beleza. And they were like, okay. And then we go on and we were trying to speak, you know, somehow. But that, that was a very um, an amazing thing to do. Susanna, how the was your... The children and the young people were just in love with the artists. They were just wanted all the time being in contact and in touch and still asking me when the artists are coming back because it changed their lives somehow. You know, from the monotonic style. And it also changed ours, I think so. This is a, an image from Yerevan, the, the opera, the National Academic Opera, theater and ballet. Um, Yerevan was all also a very nice city to, to meet. I met Susanna, after, I think, around it in, in another time. But dear Susanna, tell me about your research process of Dialogues with Power, the book. We have the image, I think it's the, the image after this one. 
So now we go to the more political issues. Yes. <laughs> because the, the project is really it's this on, book. Uh, yeah, because dialogue with power, you know, it's a really uh, political issue. So uh, my research, uh, uh, it was realized in Moscow, in the Garage Museum of uh, Contemporary Art, when they announced about they have uh, the kind of program called uh, Field Research Program. So <clears throat> everybody can apply for this program, but if you have some idea to have a research on the Russian uh, context, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's in Soviet time or the contemporary Russian context. So uh, I was very interested. So it, uh, this was the moment uh, when I was working with one of the Armenian Iranian artists on the very on constructing very monumental installation, which the uh, to construct it uh, we uh, we refers to the uh, to the method of construction very uh, innovative in Soviet time, which was first time realized uh, Vladimir Shukhov, his scientist uh, engineer. Somebody called him architect, but uh, he's really very scientific engineer. Maybe uh, I don't know if uh, if if uh, somebody in the Portuguese context uh, 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 heard about uh, like this uh, Vladimir Shukov iconic uh, iconic uh, tower in Moscow, Shabalovka Tower. Um, uh, then first time it, it was like uh, uh, it's really symbolized nowadays it symbolized the Soviet propaganda on that time in Soviet time yeah. but the construction itself of this shovel of the tower was very innovative on that time which afterwards after the Shukha started to be used by different architect, architects in the world and etc. It's really very interesting construction but the Thematic, uh, the issue of Shukhov was really much more expanded, of course. And uh, uh, I started to think uh, about uh, the interest, as I was very interested in the phenomenon of Soviet of Ru or Russian avant-garde, uh, like this avant-garde activist in culture and in, 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 in the art in the very early Soviet time. Uh, in especially 20s, uh, 1920s, uh, right after the Bolshevik uh, or October Revolution in, in uh, Moscow and uh, when the, uh, a bit later, <clears throat> like in 1922, the Armenia was involved as a Soviet Republic uh, in this circle of, uh, big circle of the Soviet Union. Uh, so uh, it was interesting for me at the same time to have a research on this phenomenon of avant-garde because it already had the very big influence on the local contemporary art field. Some artists, some artists which were very, very uh, politically and socially engaged artists, of course, because the phenomenon of avant-garde is uh, it has very much more political messages because they really had a aim, the goal, goal to change the war, you know. And it affected the way they 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 were thinking about the creation process. The, how do they how how that affect the the way artists uh, could create? Uh, so they they uh, if you if you're asking for uh, like the experiences, practices of this Soviet or Russian avant-garde or Soviet yeah. avant-garde, they, they're very closer to the powerful system because they they were very strong in their ideas or rhetorics, texts, uh, manifests, and the power system uh, uh, really use it, you know, use it because it was, uh, they were, uh, uh, generator of the, this very new idea how to construct the new world socialist system it was like under the uh, big revolution even the world revolution in whole the world it was like this kind of uh, pretentious really ambitious very ambitious uh, uh, 
uh, position of the avant-garde activists. Uh, but uh, lately, in Stalin time, they were like, uh, let's say, symbolically behaved uh, because it was like the big uh, uh, concurrency between the powerful system and the avant-garde activists. They had uh, some position in the government, even uh, like they were leading some departments of the culture, literature, and etc. But the main thing that they were producer of the ideas in Soviet time, very universal, universalistic ideas, of course. They never pay attention on the, let's say, on the fringe of the Soviet Union, like other republics, because Soviet Union was a very uh, multinationalistic, you know. So uh, I just want to uh, really, I have like book at me. So um, this is very interesting the, that there were a lot of criticism to the uh, Soviet avant-garde. Uh, you hear these names, yes, like uh, Malevich, Rochenko, Shklovsky, uh, many women, but women were a bit passive in the producing the text. So men was in avant-garde. So it, I can say that it was like more masculine movement because women were very active in their visual uh, and artistic expressions, but men were in again in avant-garde to producing the text manifests and uh, like they were core ideologists of, of all this movement. So it was really, uh, I was very interested like why this big influence of uh, avant-garde activist texts and even projects which were sometimes even copy pasting by local Armenian artists like started like two, three years ago. I understand that it's very political and interesting and very revolutionary, you know? And yeah. uh, the, it was before revolution, before this 2018 revolution in Armenia, then Armenian artists, male artists mainly, were very interested and uh, were under the big influence of the avant-garde movement of Soviet time. <clears throat> I was thinking that uh, so there was a switch then really, uh, during the revolution. Not revolution, yes. No, no, oh. before revolution. Okay, okay. Before okay, okay, revolution. okay. I, I emphasized that it was before revolution. But that's, you know, that's what I... art, but we were really like in the process I... of the preparing of the revolution in our Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. I, 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 can I just just ask you a question? Yes. I mean, if you compare mostly the avant-garde situation and all the environment culturally, you know, in arts creation and so, uh, if you compare the years, you know, of independence, the end of the Soviet Union, let's say during the 90s and 2000, and now, if you compare, if you make it, you know, last 20, 25 years, what differences will, would you find? That's, that's really, I'm really curious about it. What was the that atmosphere in Armenia, you know, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, when the Soviet Union ended, yeah, yeah. And, and nowadays? And if, uh, as Pedro went to Armenia last year and I could go, you know, what would we find now in Armenia? I would love to say about it, but you're now asking this question. Yeah, because it's very interesting. Why, why are, you, are you really interested to have some research and have some comparative research, yeah? Uh, it, it was not, not only this uh, topic which uh, uh, exposed in the book, of course, but uh, it was one of the interesting issues which I was interested to research. Of course, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's a bit fiasco of contemporary, nowadays contemporary art field, that to so much referring, it's not like the total uh, phenomenon, you know, like some five, six artists really very interested in Soviet avant-garde. For me, it's uh, not, uh, it, it's kind of fiasco because it's it's not very topical nowadays, I think so. And, but for example, uh, did, did because, these Soviet artists visual something which influence? happened, uh, sorry, just, uh, let, me, let me please to, let me please to, to conclude my my, uh, okay. my, my work. yes, because you interrupted me, and I I, I want to uh, okay, answer okay, okay. To have my answer to uh, to the question. So 
Yes, I think that it's it, it's not topical nowadays for me. For me, for artists, it's uh, interesting. So I'm I'm going to organize uh, interesting discussion about it to uh, to invite artists to speak about it uh, in the frame of the upcoming artist run Biennale. Did it maybe inform that uh, artist uh, uh, the artist organized Biennale and the opening will be on April twenty. Yeah, so they suggested me, organizers, to organize a couple of discussions with the Biennale. So one of the topics is about this influence of Soviet avant-garde. Yes, I think that it's not topical nowadays. I have already told the parties. I understand that it was like interesting uh, movement, of course, very political, very revolutionary. Not uh, The artists think that it was not survive, not serve the government, but I don't agree with them. I think for us, especially for the Armenia, which was like periphery country for the in the Soviet Union time. So these ideas of very universal avant-garde, you know, because they their utopian, main utopian ideas was like universal revolution to hold the world, like uh, going uh, um, to uh, like following to the Trotsky, tro left Trotsky ideas of the uh, like the world, whole world revolution, you know. Uh, so for these kind of periphery countries, of course, it's uh, somehow a very colonial point of view because if we for for us it's really very valuable these ideas of universalism. So it's not uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, it's immediately bring the another ideas of hierarchization, hierarchies of the in the geopolitics of the Soviet countries, because the center was in Moscow, and the periphery countries like Armenia, Georgia, like Middle Asian countries, and etc. So they were, of course, in in the periphery. So uh, that's why I very agree with the. Uh, researchers and scholars who uh, uh, interpreted Soviet Union like very colonial project. So for me, this kind of to be so much influenced by Soviet avant-garde, it's not topical nowadays, I think. Because, yes, some ideas is really interesting. They have very big influence even on the Western avant-garde because the first avant-garde movement was in Russia, in Moscow. But anyway, I'm not agree. Yes, I think that for nowadays yeah. to use so, so I would, I would, ideas, it's not I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I would conclude, I would uh, assume from your uh, speech that right now young artists and, you know, people like Pedro yeah, or like, yeah. like yeah. Just, just let me finish, please. People like Lilith or like Pedro, you know, young generation artists in the 30s or something, they are not so much influenced by that period. I, I, would, I would assume yeah. that. That was the question uh, I was about to do to Lily. I think the, uh, it doesn't matter of the age. Uh, age it doesn't matter. So some young artists involved uh, uh, influence too because uh, the Armenian art scene, contemporary art scene, was very politicized. Very politicized since two thousand eight. Very politicized. So it was uh, like kind of event. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the moderator is Pedro. I let myself carry on by the, the, Go the on. discussion, this, so I'm, this is a, and I'm very, this is, you know. This is a conversation. I, I, I just, but the, the, maybe we we'll let uh, Lilith answer to that question because it has to yeah. do with uh, young artists and, and uh, the influences okay. they, this, they, they yeah. had. This sorry. Was the question, this was the question I was about to do to Lilith before. If, if somehow you, 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 are, you were influenced by Soviet visuals and Soviet avant-garde, how did this influenced your work. It did well, not influenced. I was. Uh, I emphasized yeah. that it was mainly male artists. I yeah, but I'm asking. Uh, but I'm asking yeah. a little bit. How did this or not influence her? I had a, I had a male uh, art teacher from the school who has very Soviet mentality with art and was teaching okay. us academic art and classicism all the time. And ten years in the school, I was just. Uh, it was a specialized art school. I was just learning all this Soviet metal art with the Soviet methods, and then I graduated. And then, and then he was just, you know, following my activities. And when I was in 
the uni, I still had uh, uh, lecturers with the Soviet mentality, and they kind of forcing me to no, 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 it's use all this Soviet mentality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can continue, continue, but no, no, but let's it's have a discussion. Let's continue. It, 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 it's her perspective. Yeah, yeah, I will explain. I will explain because Lily go to our direction. It's not these okay. artists have no Soviet mentality. It is the tools of the political tools, you know, to uh, like to use the uh, this uh, ideology of Soviet avant-garde as political tools for protest movement. It's not Soviet mentality. Yeah, but the, okay. maybe that's the way, the, the, that's why I think it's so important that we can mix uh, uh, different generations. Sorry, you invited me. I have it very another kind of researches because this book is really very serious, you know, it's not like no. for entertainment or something. So we, uh, uh, that's why it's, uh, I, I honestly was a bit surprised that uh, because I, in another place, I'm very now politicized and have this kind of resources. That's why better to have the uh, circle where we can uh, have like a, a more adequate conversation with each other. Because if we can't understand each other, it will be hard to to have like common conversation. Sorry, I think so. Yeah, because but I was just asking. Soviet mentality. The oh, art but... is like Vahra Magasian, Lilith, or Karen Andreasian, or uh, uh, like this uh, art laboratory first period, and they are using this left artistic front ideas. It's not Soviet. You know that they have no Soviet mentality. The, when you use some method, method of the other time, so it's, it could be like tools, you know, to... To, yeah, I understood it in a wrong way. For, for your political resistance. They use yeah, it for yeah, their yeah. political resistance. Yeah, yes. I got it now, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm yeah, sorry I interrupted. I just want to say that, yeah, to go to this direction, it really take out of the conversation because it's not mm -hmm. uh, about Soviet mentality. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I understood it in a wrong way. Well, but I will ask again uh, to Lilith, how did the Soviet visuals affect your work, like your imagetic world, the way you produce, if, you, if those are references to you? If, that's that's my, my question. Uh, I, I'm more influ influenced from the Western art, and uh, I don't know what uh, kind of influence it had in me. Uh, I think it had during the school, as I said, and the university, and now, I don't know, I prefer to speak about the artist art residency and not my art practice now, because okay. my art practice is still in development process, so I yes. prefer, yeah. Okay, also there is another topic. There is also, uh, just to go to um, the dialogues with our book that I would like to ask, um, Susanna, there is a topic that I would like to ask if you could develop the, the feminism and the neoliberal project in the 90s. So it's uh, some feminist scholars were invited to participate in this project because uh, like first page of this project, uh, Dialogues with Power, I started with this phenomenon of Shukov, afterwards go to the research of the avant-garde and I invited some scholars from Moscow and uh, Yerevan to participate because I have several topics which I would love to discuss with them uh, like about Soviet feminism and post-Soviet situation in feminism and uh, uh, if, if the Soviet uh, project was like colonial project and could you say that post-Soviet is the post as post colonial, so the another. So, in the book, if you read it, I don't know the all these topics I uh I imposed uh, that what kinds of topics I, I were interested and in, invited uh curators, scholars, cultural critic, and feminist activists. Yes, so feminist activists from Armenia and Anna Nikolosan participated. She's really, she's not artist, not from the art field. Uh, uh, she's activist and scholar. And Tamar Shirinyan, she's Armenian, but based in America. She's anthropologist and uh, gender theorist. So it was interesting. Tamar uh, were 
uh, uh, they're speaking uh, about the Soviet time feminist, the, the this uh, this uh, term of feminist didn't was didn't used in Soviet time. It, it came later from the West. But in in uh, in Soviet time, since twenties, nineteen twenties, it was like women's question. It was uh, like circling uh, between women as women's questions. Uh, Anna Nikolsan were speaking uh, more about nowadays feminism, and I I, uh, I had an exhibition in Moscow. You know this, these interviews because my my. Uh, Conversations with all uh, invited uh, scholars and critics and researchers. It was uh, recorded, and I introduced it in Moscow in the exhibition. And afterwards, actually, in this field research program, there was no idea of publication, so they didn't suggest publication. They said that uh, there is no enough financial uh, resources. But I would love really as uh, when I saw on the result of uh, my conversations uh, with these scholars, which I invited, so I would love to have this publication. So about uh, neoliberal feminism. So in Armenia, there is a, this kind of, you know, uh, kind of situation that uh, some organizations, which uh, there are several organizations nowadays. Uh, they, co they cooperate? Uh, you know, these organizations sometimes, we, we try to somehow cooperate, but these organizations mainly, uh, uh, you know, they, they never go deeper to the, our issues because the feminists, we have to, uh, uh, we have to really uh, analyze from different sides. But uh, when you have some sense that the organizations really would love to be represented on the different markets on international levels and circulating always uh, like one, two ideas uh, just to take, to be granted. So of course it, it, it more, uh, you see that it more go to the, some neoliberal interests, you know, to be in the market of feminism, but it's not like true struggle, which in Armenia we really need. Okay, and the process when when you were doing all that research, um, how it was after that to to build the the book and the and the publication. So publication was my idea. I I I, I have already told, uh, and the garage museum. They said okay. They just really find some very small financial support because it was not within the program to to publicate this, the result. And I think it was really interesting, these several topics which were really raised. And the interesting was that initially it was uh, like with, I, I started with the topic of uh, Vladimir Shukha, <laughs> this idea and go to the end. I was really uh, went uh, more deep in this uh, question of the relation of the some of scientists or culture workers or artists and how they deal with the power system in the Soviet time and the Soviet avant-garde itself too. And of course, the uh, as my topic was like some research in Soviet time, but I really go expanded the project to, to go to nowadays uh, and uh, to discuss the topic of post-colonial, post-colonialism. <laughs> In Armenia, like can we say that post-Soviet Armenia is post-colonial Armenia, or questioning uh, the colonial uh, colonial uh, issues in Soviet time? And how how that does uh, affect, the, for example, the audience, the relation of, of regular audience to go and to go to museums or theaters? Do you feel? How, how, how does that connection result right now? Uh, what audience you mean? Now? Yeah, in the audience in general right now, if they are receptive to this kind of research, if you felt that people from uh, fine arts and theater were receptive Not to- fine theater. arts because it's traditional art. No, I, okay. I, so this kind of research is or any kind of uh, 
uh, like Hadaji Bayadzan, who was invited to speak about this colonial uh, system of the uh, Soviet Union, if it's possible to speak about Soviet Union uh, using these post-colonial studies as a tools. So yeah. you know that these kind of studies or really their intellectual studies, of course, it's not for wider audience because it's very specific and uh, as uh, after right after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Russian presence in Armenia is very top, is very strong, unfortunately, because of the very corrupted regime. And for them, it was like, I don't want now, because I go really far more of the topic to, to speak about, yes, to speak about the uh, why political regime in Armenia before revolution was uh, really go to this uh, to this direction to be under the again colonial pressure from the Russia. It's another topic for discussion, of course. But want to say that it's very topical for nowadays because Russian presence, even after this last like recently happened war between Karabakh War, Second Karabakh War, Russian presence, Russian colonization is even deeper nowadays. Yeah, so so you see that even Lilith left, she's not interested in these topics. There are topics which maybe could be interested not for wider audience. You know, it's uh, in the even in the level of uh, education, like feminism, the issue of feminism or post-colonial studies, uh, they are not so much acceptable. They think that it's uh, not not topical for nowadays. So I want to say that. The whole society mainly very traditional and very difficult for them to accept this kind of uh, researches. So the audience is not wider, not. But even though you try to connect with them with your publication, right? For example, even I was uh, saying. But how many with... people read it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so for yeah. you. It was very new topics for you, but you were very interested. That's why you invited me for this conversation. Yeah. But I don't know how many people in Armenia. Yeah, I know some people which are very interested. The contemporary art field. The main part of them, they read this book and we discussed and etc. But uh, even contemporary art is very marginalized in Armenia. You know, marginalized yeah, in, in in even. Uh, a negative sense because to be marginal is good it, it, it means like kind of uh, distance critical distance to the powerful system not to be near the center but to be in the margins because it's a it's a critical voice from the margins but the word marginal it has a negative sense as well so you marginal like you are kind of outsider because yeah because it's very critical it's but very some... political so that's why it's not in the trend. In the trend is more traditional art for the powerful okay. system, for financial support, for instance, etc. Contemporary art is not like in Western countries. So you're kind of saying that there is not too much freedom of speech somehow or to produce contemporary art. Uh... No, there is freedom of speech, of course. If, 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 if even before revolution, it was some difficulties with the power system because contemporary art many perform political performances were realizing in the public spaces of course so they were taken to the police uh offices of course many times many times and me too like you know kagebe uh, just uh, once invited me to to discuss why were we why you are artists why you are so interested in the political issues and etc so so want to say yes, of course, especially before revolution. After revolution, no, there, there is no problem. But uh, it, it doesn't matter if you want to be, if you have some position, so you never be afraid, you know. That it yeah, you just have to say it and keep on fighting somehow in your ideology, right? Do you feel yes. there is, what's your perspective about the relation between the rural and urban locations? In, in, in this process? Uh, sorry? Well, the relation between rural and the urban locations. How do you think people get uh, the... Uh, so you know that rural locations, so 
During the revolution, the people from all rural locations came to Yerevan for, to, to join uh, to this big movement of protest against government to change the uh, situation. So I want to say rural people, Armenia itself, very politicized. Very. So when uh, you know that uh, I uh, established the residency program too in 2008, like more than, I don't know, 12 years ago, more than 100 artists came from different country. So they, when artists came, they they always had this question. Armenia is very, or not even question, but like a kind of a rhetoric that Armenia is really very politicized. Everybody very interested in the politics, uh, the events which happening in the country, the political news. Because I think that because of, uh, firstly, we were living in very higher level of corrupted system after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Afterwards, the, we are in the very bad geopolitical situation, you know, the, that half of Armenia has no borders with our countries which surrounded it, you know. So this is really problematic. We have no borders, like four countries surrounded Armenia, Georgia, uh, Iran, Azerbaijan and Turkey, so 50% of your borders closed. So you have very hard economical system because you have no like, uh, you know, these uh, connections and et cetera. And there was first Karabakh war, now the second Karabakh war. So I want to say that all these events uh, really uh, take people to the very political uh, context, let's say. That's why it's very amazing to see how powerful, such a powerful woman you are in the way you, you keep on fighting with your beliefs and, and actions, especially with, with the interest that you show each time you just speak with someone. And, that, and that's why I'm also very glad that I've met you after all these conversations, because you have a very strong opinion based on a very strong research. and. That's very good. I would like to it's say not that. Very strong. It's a uh, like for me, it's regular research. I know <laughs> for you, I did. Many years. Um, <laughs> I spent many years of my life in on the street in this protest movement since the collapse of the Soviet Union. The first protest, really massive protest, where uh, and the first protest uh, against Soviet. Uh, system was in Armenia, if you hear about it, in 1988, yeah, the Armenia, the first, I want to say that it's really very politicized country, you know, uh, so, uh, yes, so, and the contemporary art is very socially, politically engaged phenomenon itself, it's not only, it's not for, um, like, uh, aesthetics, beauty aesthetics, or, it's always like criticism, analysis, uh, very politically, socially engaged contemporary artists in the world, not only in, in Armenia. Do you feel the same about this in Portugal, Fernando? Uh, the way we in the audience connect with these ideological things, a lot of political stuff, economical stuff, does that right. affect? I think right now, right now we are witnessing a revival of uh, political issues in Portugal, and that's mostly since 2008, 2009, 2010, after the economic crisis we had, and then recently because of the pandemic, pandemic also. So we have a level of protest and the level of unsatisfac and unsatisfaction in young artists, I think, and even in performing arts like theater. Uh, so mm -hmm. we, we really uh, uh, are witnessing it. But this is a phenomenon of the last 10 years, maybe, you know, against uh, capitalism, against, you know, th these all these feminist issues and lesbian, mm -hmm. gay and everything. This is a phenomenon of the last 20 years. But this kind of protest with political uh, issues, maybe the last 10 years. 
because mm -hmm. before that, you know, when I was young during the 80s and the 90s, but at the end of the 20th century, it was mostly, you know, some kind of research, individual group research, maybe group avant-garde research, but not so politically, uh, you know, some not these kind of manifestos. Right now we have it um, because of, of political situation and of the economic situation, I think, mostly. But anyway, I'd like to tell that we have also in Portugal a program of residence for even for us. It's mostly directed to artists from other countries. It was very active before the pandemic, you know, when Pedro went to Armenia. It's in a, mm. in a, a beautiful house in the north of Portugal called Casa de Mateus, uh, like this, you know, you see this? Casa de... de Mateus. It's Mateus. called like this. Mateus. You can, oh. Uh, oh, okay, uh, yeah, that's it. And you, you can you find like it in the internet. The they, they they produce they produce lots of wines and you know uh, very good things. And they, they usually what they do is to to get people from other countries. They have a residence there. It's like beautiful gardens and so, and they stay during a month or so. Uh, and after that month, they, they they go away. But they they produce work and they reflect and they they are you know. Uh, uh, in a sort of uh, sometimes I isolated, but mostly they, they try to connect two or three artists from different countries. It's most, you know, I think creativity gains from uh, this kind of crossing okay, roads. Exactly. Like Pedro was there. I think Pedro was influenced by what he saw in Armenia. How many times uh, you, you stay there? How uh, during a month, two months? Uh, I stayed Pedro. there like one month and one week. It was very intense because I was shooting every almost every single day. We had the workshops with the children, doing the drawings. Then in the middle of it, we met Susanna and Natia. So it was also opening our minds of our our ways of thinking about Armenia and that really opened in my eyes and that's why that started to develop the idea of creation of this online distortion borderlines show uh, where I will intersect some four specific um, photos from the artist Cindy Sherman uh, for, for, uh, from an mm -hmm. art, artist's work also influenced with these feminists uh, like Susanna and Lilith and powerful women that they are. And after that, uh, when I see the images that I shoot it like two years ago, and especially because I know that they had a war recently, I even, you know, the way I connect with images, it's also a bit strange because I didn't film that pain that they had not recently. But I have the knowledge of the book that I have had from Susanna right now, the, the experience I had from Lilith. And now when we are creating the text of this play, but, but especially based of, uh, in for pieces of Cindy Sherman, we can see a various... I have a, I have a question. Just, uh, so your next show in Viseu, Teatro Viriato, yes. it will be in July. Yes. I, I'm asking if your next show has something to do with, Armen with your staying in Armenia. Yes, it has yes. really influenced or... Yeah, he has, he has influence in the way that it was the start of, of the creation of this show that I understood one year ago, and I will use some footage that I did as video installations, as if we live in two or three different realities, um, playing what we, we, we've solved. And that, that was impressive, the way that, for example, when we arrived in Tallinn, um, which has like 8,000 um, people living there, I, I think so. Um, at the beginning, they were like, oh, it's a strange guy, he's filming, what is going to do with that? But then we, we even had a reunion with the cops, we went there and okay, you can shoot here, you can film here, but especially it was like, I could see the tradition, I could see that they have these free um, classes of music, of dancing, of, of, of drawing uh, something that we don't have actually here uh, in, in our educational system for young children. And that was very impressive to me. The, somehow we, we lose that here in Portugal. Uh, how can we recover that? It, it, it could be free, the teaching of, of fine arts, music and dancing. How does that stimulate the children and, and every human being? I really believe that um, you don't have to be a professional in arts, but arts, it has to pass somehow in your life 
in some uh, age in your life so you can have a transformation uh, on yourself and can relate with the others. And so uh, th one thing that I really hate to hear is that, oh, I'm not from that area, so I don't have an opinion. And this happens a lot. And this cannot happen, or of course it can happen, but and I, I will not say that it shouldn't because this is the people, this is the, the, how the people are used to, to deal with. But it's so important to me to have an opinion from someone that it's outside the area, the same way that it's so important to me to talk with Lilith, with you, Fernando, and Susanna, and, and, and to understand your research from your point of view. This is the way we, for example, I was like, in, I remember I was in Armenia and I was like, uh, how can we, how, how can the Armenian audience, for example, read the, this book from Fernando? Sorry, Fernando, if you can just translate mm -hmm. to English. This is the way yeah, I... Uh, this is a sort of treaty of cardiology. So it's, uh, the title is Manual de Cardiologia, means the manual, I mean the, the book, the textbook. Uh, about cardiology because I studied medicine so it is mostly about human heart but here in most uh, different meanings you can assume of course but I think uh, this kind of, um, of poetry is also a sort of research I think we, we should mm. always research and you should always you know not be content of what you do and not be very happy just like that and you you you, you should really move on in most cir circumstances. So I, I I appreciate very much Pedro's work in that uh, uh, in the areas uh, that that he mentioned. I mean, because I think that Pedro really can uh, uh, do this kind of levels of reality. He works in uh, um, sort of different levels of reality, and I think also poetry and uh, uh, art in general. Uh, should work with different levels of reality, you know, that kind of material reality, which is visual arts and music is sound. Oh, this is in a certain way material. Uh, or in, in my case, it's words. I mean, words, word, this sound. I mean, the word is something. But after that, you, you should really search and look for other levels of reality. In the case of Pedro, in you know, performing arts, the material is the body and, you know, the space. I mean, this is material thing. He should work with that. But after that, he should uh, really uh, find other levels of reality besides, you know, the body and the space of the, the scene and everything. So mm -hmm. that's that's my point of view. No, Petro is really has very good ability to, to join the people, to organize like meeting between people. Yeah. So it's I also yeah. I also noticed it in Tallinn and Burak and how energetic he was and how he was involving the community, the young people with his innovative, yeah. I don't know, techniques and how he could create the interaction with the community and the positive energy he always had. So he's like really great uh, multimedia artist working like I always said you are like talent talented Pedro because he's working like with, with different medias and you don't understand which which media he is like the main media of his because singing drawing he's draw he, he draws all the uh, people in like the young people in Buracan he was drawing and we had a big queue near our house <laughs> people were just uh, just came to the house so and were waiting for Pedro and Pedro can you also draw me and we were, Pedro could not manage and also now Pedro can sing, now he can dance, now he can do performing uh, performance. I don't know. He can do now workshop, everything. So we, like the for us it was a great to have really kind of party. mobile and very energizer. Yeah, and <laughs> energy never, never goes down. You know, he's always on the level of full of energy. Perpetual <laughs> mobile. Yeah. So Pedro, really, you are. You are fine. You are you are very nice, and especially to make this kind of connection, you know. Exactly, exactly. I think he can make this kind of connections because he's really an energizer. You you put it very well, Susanna. Pedro is an energizer. I mean, yeah, yeah, when, I when he arrives, I mean everything. When when I was with Pedro, you know, discussing about other things like theater and so with him, there's always not new ideas and new 
new suggestions that really do this kind of connections between music, video, filming, you know, everything, mm -hmm. uh, every kind of art. I in think. Tallinn, we were in Tallinn and Burak, and we were working on our projects, trying to create a production for the final show exhibition. But in parallel, Pedro was coming like all every day. Lilith, I have a new idea for the next project. I have now a new collaboration idea. Let's create this project about the I don't know rural places and feminism and I don't know the woman uh, emancipation. I don't know lots of projects. Uh, ideas, ideas and we, we didn't manage how we can manage generally uh, the production creation for the final show or we can now create new ideas work on the ideas and still pedro you went you went pedro you went but people are keeping me asking questions about you like we come people telling me all the time when Pedro is coming back, when we can see the documentary about Tallinn and then Burakan, when we see about Burakan, can we see ourselves in the movie and etc. Okay, text Pedro and ask him about all these things, yeah. Well, I'll, uh, just want to but thank we're you. Waiting, uh, we're waiting not for Pedro, if the other, if you, Fernando, and others come to Armenia, it would be really yeah. interesting again to have some new collaboration with you maybe yeah. leave it organized again some residency our residency uh, uh location is in, in yerevan but really really it's really fine very good idea to have rural really she's right really that, that everything is concentrated on the city but the rural areas really need to be developed too especially uh, i think different we were also talking with Susanna about this, that we can do something collaborative and uh, we can work on concept and, uh, I don't know, invite artists and also talking with um, uh, some people who can fund us. And they were, I have some idea to do like in Abaran, in other places, you know, like in... Uh, yeah. Lilith, we, we, we have in Portugal... In Portugal, we have a very important foundation that has a, a very straight connection to Armenia, which is the Google yeah. Foundation. Yeah. So, so uh, maybe they could help uh, in that kind of uh, association. I don't know. For them, it's not maybe it's not so difficult because they have a um, special view about Armenia and so. Since I met Pedro, since I met. Yeah, I met Pedro. Sorry, Susanna, if uh, then you will add. But I met Pedro in 2016. Uh, we were uh, clicked somehow, and we decided to create a collaboration. And since 2014, uh, 16, I'm trying to reach the Gulbenkian Foundation and no, find ways they so help us. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah, and there is no like office in Armenia. I tried to reach the council, 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 and then the embassy, but there is no embassy. So the finally talk to them, and they like very complicated process. I send an email. I don't know proposal, everything, and then still, still. Well, seems not that easy, yeah. yeah absolutely. We, we should speak about that. Yeah, we should yeah, speak, we about could speak yeah. more, and I, yeah. I do believe that Will Blinken is also... Um, I mean, I believe more the country ministry now. Yeah, I but it, they are two artists from Portugal, and there was the same. They would love very much to invite Armenian artists. They were organizing. Uh, maybe you heard about it, Razvan Garda. Uh, so I will say... Uh, they, they're active artists and they, they would love to collaborate with Armenian artists that they're organizing. They were here in Armenia afterwards. They would love to organize like some art festival uh, in this area. But Gulbenkian was never supportive. It was mm. really strange. So they are very supportive for artists who in Portugal, based they in are. They are. To go yeah. somewhere, you know, residency or for instance, me and Lilith organize an exhibition, we invite you. Yes, the building can be, but for local Armenians, uh, no. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think I some why, but it's not 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 for <laughs> not for the, the, this uh, kind of option of conversations. Yeah, I, I even try. I do believe I do believe it's a process because also I've been sending to them the material we have, we have been doing and. I think the, also 
they do matter. They do also have a point of view about it in that they do want to build the connection between virtual and in the Romanian yeah. research and they, they also work on that. And yeah, that's why I'm so glad we can have this time to, to have this conversation and, uh, and actually to, to once again to say a big thank you to Teatro Viriato and I'm going to say uh, all, all the names like Patricia Portela for uh, inviting us, Sandra Correia, Maria João Rochete, um, Maria, Maria, ah, I'm forgetting about Liliana Rodrigues, Ana Filipe Rocha, acho que não estou Yeah, and the people that are even doing the Zoom right now, which is Carlos and Fernando, I, I know, I don't know if I'm wrong in, in the surnames, but they've been amazing, and it's been amazing the, uh, the effort that Teatro Viria, Tomás, we just were we in the private chat. Hey, Tomás, hey, I really want to thank all the team for the effort they are doing uh, on this production and the talk, the production of the show, which I will use some footage from Romania as video installations. Um, and I, I really want to thank them because actually I was thinking, how do we, in having personal connections and professional connections, open the debate for the world as we are doing right now, the people who are watching us? And I do have a special and strong connection with each one of you in in a, in, a, in, a, in a friendship way, but in a professional way because you are three very important persons that stimulate me. That so I could be here right now, uh, still producing and still writing. But the Atro Viriato is here, and he's here like the effort and doing everything so we can do this production. And when we get that 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 links and connections. Things flow, and that's why I believe that conversations like this one, it's just the beginning of the journey we can have in the future collaborating even more. But it, yeah, it was important to me to say all the names because sometimes you, you just don't, don't meet the people and, and people, real people. We, we don't, we don't, we, we could just live on the phone doing this the entire time or being at Zoom, watching people in Zoom. But, having connections or stronger connections with people about what do they think, what do they have to share with us, what are they, their different perspectives, that make, makes us grow. And yeah. So I'm, I'm just... We must be it so many times. So Lilith, we must meet each other. Yeah, I yeah. Think you're, you know, like maybe more than one year. Yeah. Yeah, because it was pandemic, like isolation, and afterwards the war. war and yeah. So the next week, I think, Lily, we can meet. Finally, <laughs> we can meet each other. Yeah, if it looks yeah. like we live in Portugal, Susanna. One of us live in Portugal. One year, but we can't. Yeah, one, yeah. one year, we, we have not seen each other. More than one year, even more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because okay. of this situation. We were just into politics yeah. all the time, trying to understand how many days we are going to live, etc. So, but For example, just uh, after this last war and what, what's happening right now in Romania, do you feel that the artists are still trying to produce, to continue their work? How, how, do, I, how do they are working right now? Now <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yerevan, they call it great, Yerevan great. Yeah. It's, it's initiative, not curators. Okay. <laughs> mm. So maybe they a bit changed. Uh. <laughs> they reflect that this started to be curators. But anyway, it's good that something is really going on. Happening, yeah. It was, it was really very stagnated uh, situation because of pandemic thirst and this war. Yeah, and it's really very important uh, to to re, re uh, rebirthing, let's say, the context. And do, yeah. and do you I feel think that the artists are generally uh, very. I mean, contemporary artists who I know are most more, mostly politic politicized, uh, yeah. more into politics. And there are like two part, two different types of artists who are pro-governmental and who are opposition. So I think like the artists who are pro-government, they are like trying to mostly um, create the works and um, um, continue the kind of artistic practices. 
but the others are kind of trying to understand what is the situation what's going to happen with the country with the politics and i don't know it's a bit different situation now we have this difficult situation and different also uh but yeah I, i'm happy really to see that kind of exhibitions and uh, activities are happening uh myself i'm trying still into the recovering process of the um, politics we had and yeah try yeah i don't know what's going on and but still art is helping yeah so, so they do they do yeah, cooperate well, uh, really it was very hard period we are in the process of recovery really okay because yeah because local political is very short very unclear many uncertainties in yeah, and this Russian uh, presence, which is now more decolonization. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of, but we must work. So it's, it's the first is uh, somehow very important for the country. And secondly, it's kind of healing procedure, you know, if, if you work really, uh, it's somehow heal you because we are really need kind of recovery after all these events which we had and faced recently now it's after three six i don't know how months passed it's already three five months maybe was uh afterward i i feel now now slowly i can be back to life and i can create but before we were just i i could not understand what which one is dream which one is reality just were trying to realize things and also like even Chen even didn't understand what we want uh, in a political way but before we had kind of position about like politics and then it changed differently and then it, I mean it was a really messy situation but now I can really think in, uh, as a real before I could not think uh, I was just dreaming or maybe I was in a a f um, fall or something yeah but i think it's okay now <laughs> we can create we can be back to life and we can do maybe next residency if the pandemic allows us uh the other regions of artists at this moment really so they huh? start to come yeah from us oh, really? two artists from france one artist oh, from nice. uh, california so they came you know they came cool. anyway it's a lockdown wow. trends in Paris, but they somehow organize everything and came. So they start, it was more than one uh, one year really uh, suspended the whole residency program. But the artists started to come and it's good. <laughs> because yeah, and, and that's, good. that's co cooperation, mm -hmm. cooperation. I, yeah. I just I think I didn't mention uh, in the beginning, but very well. But I actually met when I'm, I met Lilith in another art residency in Arden Arthur France with the collective Nomad Ways, where they they did mix people from cinema, mm -hmm. fine arts, photography, yeah. philosophy, sociology, journalism. Um, so we could open the so discussion about first time in the resident in the frame of residency program. Yes, in a residency program in the north of France, north of France, Bernay en Pontieu, and <laughs> we were just like one month at that house working. But the the the, um, the key point was like people from fine arts, sociology, philosophy, journalism. So we, we were not just we, cinema. We were not just people from theater or people from cinema or people from fine arts. So we could. We opened the discussion, and there was something phenomenal. That was like, oh, you had a, you have an idea to do a video installation, so I'm going to share you my camera. I'm going to teach you how to use it, so you can improve your work. So everyone was trying to improve the other's work, and that's when I felt that strong connection with Lilith. And we've been talking since 2016 until 2019 to create the art residency. And and one thing that I found about about you also, Suzanne, is that. You want people to improve and to get more into the, the subject they are working on. Like Fernand, he does the same. When people, someone just go ask him some research of some subject, he just gives inputs and, and gives his, gives uh, references. And this is the very best way to, to uh, how do I say, to cooperate also, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to connect people, you know? Yeah. It's like, 
Yeah, of course, you connect also universes and cultural matters because you, when you went to Armenia, you, of course, absorbed like an absorption of other things that you really didn't knew before. So it's uh, this is a kind of influence, mostly like the the old uh, Nokia uh, uh, advertising was connecting people. Yeah, it's Nokia really connecting people. Connecting people, you should connect. Uh, you really, and that's why the pandemic is so. Uh, problematic right now but uh, but I, I, I that's that's fine that you even with the pandemic you uh, Susanna you received artists from other from other yeah, countries that's that's very, yeah, yeah that's I was surprised that oh. they they're struggling to come, you know <laughs> it was really big struggle to have permission uh, etc to to come to Armenia. from Especially from Romania or from the are, okay and, and our four artists from Netherlands, they are coming wow. in the summertime. And our artists from Canada, so they all of them confirmed and even had tickets that they are coming. It, I'm really surprised because it was uh, yeah, unexpected somehow. Oh. Oh, some people wrote me about coming for the residency. I avoided, to be honest. I was not able really to do anything now. So I. I didn't like this online stuff or the art stuff, but <laughs> now I uh, transformed into online tool and created the online pr platform and working on this nowadays because I became very, very, I don't know, introverted or something because of this situation, like just avoid to, <laughs> I don't know work with introvert one year you know then pandemic started and not not any, yeah i didn't go anywhere but it was fruitful period it was before war it, and it was fruitful because i just was sitting uh in the apartment and working on the book which i the mm. second book which i want to publish it's about women's yeah. art feminist strategies uh that Armenian women's artists uh, using in their uh, artworks. Uh, so, so I start. But the war, when the war began, so it, it's really like it was a that help. Would be a very good idea if we have like a Portuguese translation of that book. We have to so work on that. Now we have to be recovering really because it was mm. very, uh, very hard, hard experience. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, we still have 30 we still have whatever we haven't seen. Moderator. <laughs> so, we are finishing now our conversation. I just we like to, ask to, you. To, to see each other in the live regime, in, in, yeah. in the live, not <laughs> online, please. It, I, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit tired of all these online. I, I, I understand. I really need some life. That's why I was really happy that artists from yeah. other countries come because yeah, because it's. Yeah. Uh, and you, you. Participated in many. Conferences. Yeah, you, you, you should come and see Pedro's show in Viseu. You should come and see. Yeah, uh, it's it's really in July. I think it's in yeah. July. In, in summertime, so. I think. I do hope that there will be no lockdown in summertime. In, Portugal, maybe me and Lilith could come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we would love to, really. I would love to. Yeah. So that, it, we we are, we are, if we will able, able, if we are able without the vaccine, <laughs> we can uh -huh. do that, but uh, uh -huh. with the negative test, but the vaccine seems a bit complicated. I don't know. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. At this moment, Armenia has only this AstraZeneca, which is very dangerous vaccine. Oh know. Yeah, we have only AstraZeneca, like third world country. They, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it was very cheap because it has very bad, uh, uh, you know, that uh, the effect of AstraZeneca is really negative. But it may be Oh my God, that would be another conversation right now. We have it. Yeah. <laughs> but Susanna, Susanna, I was listening to the news. They were telling the Sputnik is Putin is sending Sputnik soon. Yeah, Sputnik Five is okay because my close friend she lives in Italy. She said that <coughs> uh, go through vaccination with this uh, Russian Sputnik. Yeah. 
Because they, they, they say we will have it end of April, Sputnik. I don't know. End of April, we're going to have the Sputnik um, portion. Oh, so, so he, but I don't know where we'll be in this uh, big queue, you know, because first must be vaccine for uh, medical uh, workers, you yeah. know, the after who is teaching and the old people. We and then unemployed, unemployed, as the artist. And the last yeah. is the unemployers as the artists and curators. We are belong to nothing, so we don't know what, <laughs> when is our turn. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was I was thinking during this time, how did people from Tallinn and Burikin, for example, how do they manage with this situation? Do they go to Yerevan frequently, or do they just stay in their in their towns? Maybe it will be locally when it will be enough vaccine. Okay. Vaccines. But even to travel inside the country, is it it's possible right now? Sorry? To travel no. from Yerevan to right. Tallinn? Is no, it there is not, no, no, nobody is checking them. They can go travel, uh, like okay. do internal travel as much as they want to. Mm -hmm. No one is checking. Uh, people are just feeling free now. You know, this, this funny thing was that people in rural areas don't be, didn't believe and still don't believe so, lots of them. They don't believe that there is a virus. Uh, we had the countryside, uh, you know, house. We, we are going very often. We are like trying to have the mask and our meeting people there, they say, oh, throw away, away the mask. We don't believe this virus. <laughs> <laughs> we say yeah, it's not like, God or something that you don't believe. Like, don't believe. No, it's really it's so, like circulating in Armenia. It's really fun, especially in rural areas. So people say that I said from the theory of cosmology that don't believe that there is no of these virus. It's like for <laughs> empires to do something with, with the simple people. <laughs> But yes, they think it's playing with their authority somehow because if they wear mask, it's playing with their authority or something. They say, "Oh, it's it's not our style or something." If we can't. Do you, wear do you, do you think it's like? Do you think it's lack of information, or they just don't interest, or it's just like? They think them, it's shame. It it's shame. They think it's a shame that they have mask or believe that it, it means they, they are not strong or something, you know. For <laughs> men, for some kind of men, yeah, it's shame for them. For this, like machos, you know. Like, you yeah, know, machos. I, I, I remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was in the, in, the, in the cab and I couldn't put the seat belt because I'm a very good driver, so you don't need to sit down in the other seat. So I remember that. You know what? So it's now like uh, we are in the kitchen somewhere around the table and just uh, talking with each other. We go far from the topics, but maybe we are fi final finalizing everything. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, we have. Time or we have to finish now. Moderator. Yes, yes, I'm just yes. We are we are just finishing right now. And uh, once again, I want to thank to the entire team of Teatro Viriatu. I want to thank Lilith Stepanian, Susanna Gilimirian, and Fernando Pinto Moral for the conversation. And yeah, we just came. And close the conversation. When we, when we... The yeah, the, the, the schedule of your show. I mean, the dates. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, the schedule that's, that's of your show. Great. Yes, it's and the 16th and the 17th of July. Yes, okay. online distortion borderlines. Okay. With Francisco uh, Barona in the, in the, as a musician, Joana Cotri, uh, Marta Barona Abreu, Susana Blazer, and myself doing the show, and you're all invited. But I if will you really love you. Give us financial support. We come to see this. Okay, uh, let's work on that. I want to thank you all once again for, 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 for the conversation. Yeah, we will and, try. And a big thank to Teatro Viriato once again for all the effort. So I think so, we just stay by yeah. here. Let's keep in touch. Really. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank bye, -bye. You. bye bye. Thank you very much for the talk and bye.